It's been like a week or two since I vlogged, and that's because I've been pretty exhausted and busy with what I've been doing. But anyway, what I was gonna say is, um, I, have, I do have some progress to show you guys, and um, that's not that's not the only thing I want to tell you guys. Um, another thing is, um, President Biden is going to unveil the first image from the James Webb Space Telescope right now in like 30 minutes or so, 5 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time. I thought it was going to be 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but turns out that's not the case. But anyway, um, I was going to say, right, so the past few weeks I've been working on the mini labs, so I think I kind of grumbled in my previous vlog that I hated coding in Fortran. And honestly, I'm kind of over it now. I actually don't hate it as much anymore because I know what I'm doing. So I got over mini, mini lab 1, mini lab 1.5, and mini lab 2, which I'll go over in a bit like what I did with each of those mini labs. And then I had to reproduce some results from. Well, maybe in my mouth. I have to reproduce some results from uh, my advisor's 2017 paper, which I'll show you guys in like the next clip or so. Other than that, I'm going to be working on my three planets for the next three weeks. And what I'm going to be basically doing is I'm going to be reconstructing the graph that my advisor did. And after that, I'll basically, you know, just uh, modify stuff and play around with the variables. By variables, I mean like the specific factors like the irradiation flux and the heating and inflation, basically. But other than that, um, there's not really much going on. Oh yeah, I'm also preparing my presentation slides, so that's another thing that I will show you guys in like the next few clips or so. But anyway, that's my update for now. Um, oh, another thing. So, the official, official unveil of the James Webb Space Telescope images is going to be tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the morning, so... Um, uh, we here at, uh, at UMD are going to be pretty much uh, the the Department of Astronomy is going to I guess watch the whole thing live. So we're going to have like our own I guess arrangement to I guess watch the whole thing together. So I'll vlog a bit of that when I get the chance. And well, depending on whether they you know I don't want to vlog too much because I don't want to ask them if they're comfortable with being recorded or not. At the same time, I don't want to include them in the video. But that's going to be tomorrow. Other than that, I don't have anything else to say. I'll see you guys in the next clip. Voila. All right, first of our image at the JWST. Here we go. Let me click the like button. Yeah, the like button. It took me a while to register that in my brain. Oh, let me click the like. Anyway. All right, here's the first image, guys. Here's the first image. Oh my god, look at that, look at that. First Emma image from the JWST, the James Webb now, Space Telescope. Nelson, I'm going to turn this over to you, so will you please tell us about what we're seeing? President, if you held a Space Telescope in your hand, what would you see? on the tip of your finger at arm's length, that is planets because of the chemical composition that we can determine with this telescope of their atmosphere if those planets are habitable. And when you look- It's 12th of July, 10 a.m. Today's a historic day, because today we're going to get, uh, going to view the first official broadcast, the first images from the JWST, and so the whole squad at the astronomy department is going to um, watch the live broadcast from NASA in a bit. So I'm heading there right now. We'll uh, keep you guys updated on what goes on, and hopefully take a video of whatever goes on during the broadcast. Anyway. Need to go quick. It's now back to the future and we'll be parking. All right.
Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so the first image is a deep field. And it's also yeah, we, a deep field. Yeah, this was shown yesterday. So why don't we walk through this just a little bit? So if we come up and look at this image, first of all, it's really gorgeous. And it's teeming with galaxies. And that's something that has been true for every image we've gotten with Webb. We can't take blank sky. Everywhere we look, there's galaxies everywhere. And so, you know, this galaxy. We're basically translating light that we can't see into light that we can't see by applying uh, color like red, green, and blue to the different filters that we have from Webb. And the reason we want to color the images is because there's actually more that you can get, more information that you can get from the image if you see it in color. Oh god. Dear it is. called Estrac, which is NASA's deep space tracking system, and they were listening out when we're called. There it is. It's called Stefan's Quintet, and it's wondrous. Giovanna, what are we looking at? Yes, like you said, Quintet, so we are looking at five galaxies. Galaxies are uh, this giant structure that as we see, you see everywhere. The last image is, wow, look at that. So Amber, can you, can you tell us a bit about what we're seeing here? Of course. This stunning vista of the cosmic cliffs of the Carina Nebula reveals new details about this vast stellar nursery. Today, for the first time, we're seeing brand new stars that were previously completely hidden from our view. Is there something you want to point out here? Absolutely. So, honestly, it took me a while to even figure out what to call out in this image. There's just so much going on here. It's so beautiful. One thing that really, really stands out to me is you sort of get this sense of depth and texture from this new data. Um, there's just, there's a lot going on. To call out a few specifics, first of all, in general, the Carina Nebula is a nearby star forming region within our own Milky Way. So that was a revelation from the James Webb Space Telescope. Is it gonna affect what I'm gonna do? Absolutely not. But it's gonna change things in the future for sure. Anyway, I'll get back to you guys in the next few million years. Just kidding about that, I mean like the next few minutes. I realized I failed to answer the second question in my last clip and I meant to say, yes, it's gonna change what I'm gonna do in the future, that's for sure. At the moment, what I'm doing, it's not gonna change that that much because it's, it's already just simulating the theory that I'm working on. And that's gonna be just of that. Anyway, I'll show you guys what I'm doing in like the next few, who knows how many minutes. To give you guys a very brief overview of what I did, this is what I did. Okay, so, I did the mini labs that was by um, Jonathan Fortney from the U University of California Santa Cruz and I believe um, it was a person who ran the summer school for Mesa, the Mesa summer school, like uh, this is from 2017's Mesa summer school and my advisor went there to um, I guess he participated in it and I guess blah 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 blah. What I was trying to say is my advisor went to Mesa summer school back in 2017 and this was pretty much one of the tutorials that they would make you do, well, one of the mini labs that they would make you do, and this specific mini lab is for basically um, the Dravian planets of uh, Jupiter and Saturn, but I think no, this, is, this one is specifically just Jupiter, oh well, hot Jupiters in general. So I mean, you can see Saturn here of course, but like specifically the mini labs I did, they were specifically for Jupiter. So this is very, very, um, this is a very, very, I guess, good way of summarizing what is going on in the mini lab. So for mini lab one, I'm irradiating um, a Jupiter mass planet and um, basically doing stellar heating. So for that, I had to do some modification with the Runstar extras, which is basically um, the Vortran file that I had to kind of fiddle around with. And once I was done with that, I had some um, some results to, I guess, the view. Yeah. Um, but that was basically it for Mini Lab 1. It was just, it was just like modifying one specific subroutine and then just adding it to the in list and you guys are probably wondering what I'm even talking about. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And as for Mini Lab 
on point five, I'm, it's basically mini lap one, but this time I'm modifying everything from the Fortran file. I'm trying to call it into the inlist. And mini lap two is just all of that plus my own um, plus my own implementation of uh, the interior heating. Now let me show you what I mean by all this. Dippy dippy dope. This is what I flipping mean. So if I had to add this in, which is kind of, I guess, a bit different from, I guess, uh, the Mesa code they had back in 2017. So keep in mind, the Mesa I'm running is an updated version and it's, it's basically the 2022 version. And so I had to make some modifications here to make sure it's kind of compatible with the updated code. So what I did is number one, I, um, Make sure it was be you know this is this is how you make sure it's being called off the in list, and then after that, um, most of my work was basically most of my modification was basically here. So here, if we just um, we focus here real quick. This is basically um, where I set the mass for um, not mass, sorry, the luminosity of a star, and this is where. I set the semi-major axis, which is by like, I believe it was like, what, one? Well, no, no, it was like 0.5 AU. The luminosity was like one um, erg per second. And on top of that, um, I had to make this modification. Sorry, that was my mother calling. Um, as I was saying, um, if you focus on this, this is the radiation flux that's for like mini lab two. And of course, if, if we go down, this is interior heating that's for like mini lab. Uh, Sorry, this was for Minilap 1.5, whereas this is for Minilap, Minilap 2. And then, uh, after setting these up, I have to call them from the inlist. So let's go there. Here's the inlist, and this is where I call uh, call the functions, basically the call subroutines and uh, functions, I guess. Yeah. So this is where I pretty much call them. It makes things a hell of a ton easier because every time I have to make a modification, I don't really have to go into the fortune file itself. I just can modify things in the name in the in the inlist. So that's one of the perks. That's what I've been doing for the past few weeks now. And now my things are a bit different. I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, how do I put this? So basically, uh, earlier today I had a meeting with my advisor, and we basically went over how I can run one of the test kind of models. Well, not no no not really test planet per se. But actually, it is a test planet model for um the planet Tick two five six seven, also known as four three two nine, I believe. And it's basically a gas giant planet that's that's that is like 0.5 times the mass of Jupiter. Point being, I'm basically um, simulating it for pretty much, I guess, some heat and no heat. That's basically the idea so far. And uh, I basically fiddle with that, you know, basically try to um, make sure it's compatible and modifiable to current Mesa version. That was literally what I was doing this week. I'll show you guys more of what I'm doing next week or whenever I start recording again. Voila. Okay. So there's water leaking from up here. Oops. Yeah, it's coming out of there, I think. But yeah, it's gonna be, gonna be troublesome if it starts raining even harder. I mean, it did, but if it, any persistent raining is gonna cause a flood of some sort, because look at this. At the moment, the power is kind of out, so long story short, um, basically, there was a terrible storm earlier today in the, uh, in the late afternoon hours, basically, and, how do I say this? Basically, the storm was so bad, it knocked the power out, it knocked some trees down, and it killed a, peep, a person or two, I believe, and, uh, yes, that's pretty much it. I thought it was... There was a tornado for a second because there was a chance. There's a two percent chance of tornado happening today, and I was very concerned. But I thought it was like, you know, after it passed, I'm like, it couldn't be that bad. But as soon as I went outside, there were like so many things down, so many trees, branches, and even the highways were like freaking blocked off. Like, gosh, what an eventful day! <laughs> what an eventful day! The power's out at the moment, and. I expect the power to be back by like the early hours of, not the early hours, um, 
by some time between 5 and 10 a.m. It's 2 a.m. right now, so yeah, I'm just reading the three-body problem at the moment um, to kind of ease my tension, and because, you know, I'm a night owl, I'm typically dependent on technology, but I'm trying to save up my child at the moment, which I, sh it's, I should stop recording right now, so I'll talk to you guys later.